Greetings, my name is Drew, and today I'm going to talk to you about the top 10 most outrageous pens that we sell here at the Goulet Pen Company. So let's start off by saying that this is pretty much a list that is based on my opinion, and that there are some beyond outrageous pens out there that we won't be covering. Limited editions, big and crazy ones from like David Oscarson, Monte Grappa, or Visconti that we won't be getting into. However, in this list, I will be covering pens that are, for some reason or another, truly outrageous. I had a really tough time with the top two, so you'll have to let me know what you think. Let's get into it. All right, coming in at number 10, we have the Conklin Endura Abalone and Chrome, Chrome trim. They have other trims, but uh, this one I think is outrageous because it's taking abalone, which was traditionally used a little bit more sparingly in pen decor, like rod and things like that. They like to sprinkle it in. No, not with this pen. They're going all in, covering the whole thing with abalone. It is abalone-licious and pretty in your face. Definitely outrageous at number 10. Number nine, we are gonna go with Conklin again, but this time this is a Mark Twain Crescent Filler in rainbow, obviously. So even the filling mechanism on this one is a bit outrageous. It is their, it is their Crescent Filler, which fills using a bladder system, which is unconventional these days anyway. So everything about this pen is a bit outrageous. Not only the fact that you cannot unsee this thing if you wanted to, you're gonna see this coming from a mile away. And it's also heavy. It's, there's just a whole lot going on here. There's a whole lot going on with this pen. So uh, worthy of number nine. Number eight is an interesting one. Looking at it, the Monteverde tool pen is not in your face. However, I do often wonder why it exists. Not only why it exists, we've been selling this pen for a very long time and people still buy it. It's the wackiest thing. So it is a fountain pen. It's got a number five steel nib on here, but it's also a ruler. It's also a level. It's got a stylus tip that is removable and beneath the stylus tip is a Phillips head and flathead screwdriver. I, don't, I just, I mean, I'm glad that people like it. I'm glad that people buy it, but my goodness, like, why? All right, number seven. The Jin Hao 999 Dragon Pen. This is the gold and red version. There is a slightly more subdued version, but we're not going for subdued today. We're going for outrageous. I mean, look at this thing. It weighs, I think, about 1,000, 1,500 pounds. Yeah, somewhere around there. It has dragons in it with these gold bejeweled eyeballs that, you know what, I will give them credit. They line up whenever you, you know, close it. The dragons are always staring at each other, so attention to detail, I suppose. This pen is very loud, very gaudy, and I'd say it's impossible to use posted. Like, I'm seriously going to do damage to my wrist, so it is a health risk. Yet, we have been carrying it for quite some time, which means people keep buying it. So, I'm happy if you have one, I hope you're happy too, but this thing is outrageous. All right, so six and seven, we're doubling up on brands again, and I bet you know what brand it is, it's Bennu. So for number six, we have the Bennu Vodka on the Rocks pen. And this is Bennu doing a very Bennu thing, and that is adding a ton of shimmer, sparkle, and craziness to a pen. The Vodka on the Rocks is super popular because it's just, it is everything that I think folks want in a Bennu pen. It's loud, obnoxious. It almost hurts to take it in, but it's also very enjoyable as well, which I think might be the way some folks feel about vodka. All right, we're halfway done with number five. We're going back to the Banu well with the Grand Scepter 10. These are all Roman numerals, so Grand Scepter X, Grand Scepter 10. This one is Banu doing everything Banu wants to do with a pen. It has the glitter, it has the crazy ombre blue to purple, and then it has these crazy magenta ends, which, yes, they glow in the dark. This doesn't even look like a pen, for starters. I don't, I mean, it's like, they call it the Grand Scepter, so, whoo, you know, but, my goodness, this doesn't post. It's it's a funky, crazy, just explosion of color. But again, that's Banu, right? But it absolutely deserves to be on this list because just look at it. All right, we're down to number four now. And number four is going to be a Diplomat pen, specifically the Zep. Now, when I first saw this pen, I thought this was insane. Compared to the rest of the pens on this list, though, it's actually kind of tame. Despite that, I do think it deserves its number four spot because it is a Zeppelin pen. It is a dirigible in your hand. It has this, it's, it's mostly brass and aluminum. It is a little weighty, but it is, uh, you know, it gives you a good simulation as to uh, what writing with a giant inflated 
hydrogen filled mass of metal would feel like. So if that's what you're looking for, then the Zep is the pen for you. It is uh, it actually comes in a gold and a silver version. I mean, obviously it's mostly silver, but I'm talking about this, the trim. And it as a spring loaded clip, it's, uh, there's a whole lot going on here. There's a whole lot to unpack. But again, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It clearly set out to be a Zeppelin pen and it's doing that successfully, I'd say. Mm. All right, we're down to the top three folks. And this one is a Namiki. And this specifically is a Yukari in the herb decoration pattern. So this one not specifically is the third most outrageous pen we have, but I wanted to put a Namiki in here to represent all of the Makie pens. You know, Sailor has them, Pelican has them, Namiki certainly has them. But the amount of work that goes into producing one of these pens is literally months worth of effort by trained artisans that spend their whole lives doing this craft. We're talking lacquer and lacquer and lacquer and paint and paint and paint. And this one actually does have abalone, in the more in the rotten form, which is yes, sparingly, not quite as audacious and ostentatious, but the work and effort that takes that it takes to create something like this is absolutely outrageous. This pen also features a, I guess that's I don't, it's not felt. It's like I don't know, there's some so, sort of softness in the cap, so that when you post it, it cushions against the Rushi lacquer on the pen, so you can not have to worry about doing any damage to it long term. We're down to it. The top two most outrageous pens, in my opinion. And like I said at the beginning, I had a tough time with this. I asked some folks, there was some debate, but here's where we landed. Number two, most outrageous pen has got to be the Visconti Watermark in Iridium Rainbow. This pen is insane. Just look at it. You've got a crazy amount of cuts, the V logo from Visconti, overlaying the clear barrel and cap of a watermark model pen. So the entire thing is covered in this crazy iridium metal. Even the clip, the famous spring-loaded clip, fully operational, but also fully insane looking. And not only that, look at this nib. They covered the whole nib in the exact same finish. This is the loudest nib I have ever seen, ever. It's insane. So I said that again, it's insane. And not only that, but the piston rod, the rod that the vacuum filler operates with is also iridium plated. And you can look in here and you can see every little bit of metal has that same polish. So this was so close to being number one. It's so close. And maybe it is, I don't know, you'll have to let me know, but I think number one tops it just barely. So let's take a look. All right, this is it. The number one most outrageous pen that we have right now, in my opinion, has got to be the Peniter homage to Armand in Day and Night. This pen, like the Watermark Iridium Rainbow, has that same Iridium finish all over, which has to contribute to the outrageousness of it all. However, you've got these massive cuts in there, and they're not just, these are literal cuts. You can put your fingers right through the pen if you wanted to. You can feel the inner cap, you can feel the filling mechanism, which while the Watermark has a double reservoir power filler, vacuum filler, which is neat, they have that on plenty of models and the vacuum filler is not an exclusive thing. The Peniter they created, specifically Dante Del Vecchio, created the mystery filler, which is in you know its most simple form, a piston filler, but operationally, you've got a button that then releases and you get to see the entire, the, all of the actuated parts moving around as you manipulate the piston to go downward. And you can touch all of these. None of this is behind any sort of protective resin uh, window or anything like that. So you gotta give it points for that. It's got a spring-loaded clip as well, going with the whole quill theme. And speaking of the quill theme, it has the quill nib. Now, while Visconti has that crazy looking nib, I had to give points to this one because it literally is a crazy nib. The quill nib is one of the most unique nibs on the market today. It's got these cutouts, it is a little flexible, and it is very, very unique to Peniter. So just barely, I'm giving the edge to the Peniter Armand day and night pen. It also has a magnetic cap and it also posts magnetically as well. So 
This one's the winner. I'd love to know what you think. I had a tough time with this, as I mentioned. If you liked what you see, let me know. And if you do know about some truly outrageous pens that I did not mention or showcase here today, there could be a sequel to this if need be. So let me know the most insane pen you've ever seen, and we'll talk about it. Please uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you wanna see more of these videos, there will be more, there has been more, so check them out. And if you'd like to know more about the pens we covered here today, they are on the product pages at goulaypens.com. Thank you and right on.